Are you interested in data analytics but not sure where to start? Or maybe you're already working with Excel and wondering how real data analysts use it. In this video, you'll learn how to use Excel like a data analyst, even if you have no prior experience. We'll walk through the most essential tools and formulas used in data analytics, from cleaning and transforming data to analyzing trends and building simple reports. You don't need to know programming or have advanced Excel skills. If you understand how rows and columns work, you're ready to begin. When working with raw or messy data, we often need to reshape it before doing any meaningful analysis. This process is called data transformation, and it's essential for preparing clean, structured data sets in Excel. Let's transform messy data into structured insights, right in Excel. In this table, we have a list of weekday names. Now let's extract only the first three letters from each day's name. To do this, we'll use the left function. Click on the first cell under left three char and type equals left B5, comma three. This tells Excel to take only the first three characters from the text in cell B5. Press enter and then drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of codes that include some text and a four-digit number. Now let's extract only the last four digits from each code. To do this, we'll use the write function. Click on the first cell under write four digit and type equals write B 5,4. This formula takes the last four characters from the text in cell B5, which gives us the numeric code. Press enter and drag it down to apply the formula to the rest of the cells. Let's move on to the next function. We have a list of product codes like code 1009, code 1589 and so on. But what if we just want the numeric part of each code? Let's use the mid function to extract the last four digits from each code. The formula is equal sign mid B554. Here's how it works. We start from character 5, right after code, and we want to extract four characters. The result? Just the digits, exactly what we need. Let's move to the next function. In this table, we have a list of ID numbers. Now let's find out how many characters are in each ID. To do this, we'll use the len function. Click on the first cell under number digit and type equals len b5. This formula counts all the characters in the cell, including letters, numbers, and even symbols. Press enter and drag it down to see the length of each ID number. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of dates when users joined or made updates. Now, we want to create a message that says exactly when each update happened. Let's say we try this formula. Last updated on and B5. It might seem correct, but instead of showing the full date, Excel returns something like last updated on 45,707, which is the serial number of the date. To fix that, we'll use the text function to properly format the date. Click on the cell last updated on and text B8 DDM4M4Y. This converts the serial number into a readable format like 25 May 2025 and adds it to your custom message and drag it down to apply it to the rest. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have first names and last names listed separately. Now let's combine them to create full names. To do that, we'll use the concat function. Click on the first cell under full name concat and type equal sign concat b5 space c5. This formula joins the first name and last name with a space in between. You can also use a comma, dash or any other symbol instead of a space. For example, equal sign concat b5 comma c5 would return Alice Johnson and then drag the formula down to apply it to the entire list. Let's move on to the next function. 
In this table, we have first names and last names listed separately. Now let's combine them to create full names. To do that, we'll use the concatenate function. Click on the first cell under full name concatenate and type equal sign concatenate B5 space C5. This formula joins the first name and last name with a space in between. You can also use a comma, dash or any other symbol instead of a space. For example, equal sign concatenate B5, comma, C5 would return Alice Johnson. And then drag the formula down to apply it to the entire list. You might be wondering, what's the difference between concat and concatenate in Excel? They both do the same thing. They combine text from multiple cells. The key difference is concat is the newer, more modern function. Concatenate is the older version and is now considered deprecated, which means it's still available but not recommended for new formulas. So, whenever possible, you should use Concat, especially in newer versions of Excel like 365 or Excel 2019 Plus. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have first names and last names in separate columns. Let's combine them into full names, even if some cells might be empty. To do that, we'll use the text join function. Click on the first cell under full name text join and type equals text join open parenthesis space comma true comma b5 colon c five close parenthesis. This formula joins the values from both cells using a space. The second argument true tells Excel to ignore any empty cells in the range. Just like with concat or concatenate, you can replace the space with a comma, dash, or any separator you prefer. For example, text join, comma, true, B5 to C5 will return Alice Johnson. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. Let's move on to the next function. When analyzing large data sets, we often need to summarize key metrics based on certain conditions. This is where data aggregation comes in, helping us group and calculate values quickly. We'll use formulas like SAMIF and SAMIFs to total values based on one or multiple conditions countif, and countifs to count entries that meet specific criteria average, if an averages to calculate averages with one or more conditions. Minifs and maxifs to find the smallest or largest values that meet defined criteria. This technique is essential for building clean reports, dashboards, and making informed decisions in Excel. Let's see how it works in action. In this table, we have product sales data by country and quantity. Let's say we want to calculate the total quantity sold for a specific product, in this case, olives. To do that, we'll use the SAMI function, which allows us to apply one condition. Click on the result cell and type equal sign SAMIF C5 C17 G5 D5 D17. Here's what it does. C5 C17 is the range. Excel checks for the product name G5 is the criteria cell, currently set to olives D5 D17 is the quantity column where the matching values will be summed. Excel will go row by row and add up quantities where the product is olives. Press enter to get the total and you'll see the sum of G5. If we change the product in G5 to something else, like ham or wine, the result updates automatically. No need to touch the formula again. This makes it perfect for dashboards and dynamic reports. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have sales data showing quantities of different products sold across several countries. Now let's calculate the total quantity of wine sold in Spain. To do this, we'll use the SAMIFS function, which allows us to apply multiple conditions. Unlike SAMIF, which works with only one condition, SAMIFS lets you apply two, three, or even more filters at the same time. So if you're working with complex data, SAMIFS gives you much more control and flexibility. Click on the result cell and type equal sign SAMIFS D5, D17, C5, C17, G5, B5, B17, 
G6. Here's what each part does. D5, D17 is the range where we want to sum quantities. C5, C17, G5 filters only the rows where the product is wine B5. B17, G6 filters only the rows where the country is Spain Excel will add up the quantity only if both conditions are met. Press enter to get the total and you'll see the sum of wine sales from Spain. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. This makes it perfect for dashboards and dynamic reports. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees and their salaries. Let's count how many employees earn $2,000 or more. To do this, we'll use the counter function, which lets us count cells that meet a specific condition. Click on the result cell and type equal sign count if C5, C14, greater than or equal 2000. Here's how it works. C5, C14 is the range of salary values we want to check the condition greater than or equal 2000 tells Excel to count only the salaries that are greater than or equal to 2000 Excel will go through each salary and count how many meet the rule. You can change the condition to anything else. For example, less than 3000 or even equal 5000, depending on what you want to count. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees, their salaries and performance ratings. Let's count how many employees earn at least $2,000 and have a rating greater than 5. To do that, we'll use the COUNTIFS function, which lets us apply multiple criteria at once. Click on the result cell and type equal sign COUNTIFS. C5, C14, greater than or equal 2,000. D5, D14, greater than 5. Here's what it does. It checks the salary column for values greater than or equal to 2000. Then it checks the rating column for values greater than 5. It only counts the rows where both conditions are true. This is great for filtering performance data, eligibility or layered rule checks in HR and finance. You can change the condition to anything else. For example, greater than or equal 3000 or greater than 4 depending on what you want to count. You can add even more criteria if needed. COUNTIFS supports up to 127 conditions. Let's move on to the next function. We want to calculate the average income for each year listed on the right. To do this, we'll use the average if function, which allows us to average values based on a single condition. Here's how it works. Equal sign average if B5, B16, E5, C5, C16. B5, B16. This is the range where we check the condition, the year. E5, the specific year we're calculating for C5, C16, the range of income values to average. So, for example, for 2021, Excel finds all rows with 2021 in the year column, then averages the corresponding income values. This is a great way to break down your data and analyze trends over time. Let's move on to the next function. We want to calculate the average income for all records starting from the year 2023 and onward. To do this, we'll use the average ifs function, perfect for applying conditions while averaging data. Here's what's happening in the formula. Equal sign average ifs, C5, C16, B5, B16, greater than equal E5. The formula is looking through the income column, checking only the rows where the year is 2023 or later, and then calculating the average of those income values. It's a powerful way to create responsive summaries that update automatically when you change the criteria. Great for dashboards, dynamic reports, or filtering performance over time. In this table, we have quantity data for different products sold across several countries. Now, let's find out the maximum quantity of olives sold in Spain. To do that, we'll use the maxifs function, which returns the highest value based on one or more conditions. Click on the result cell and type equal sign maxifs D5, 
D5, C5, C7, G5, B5, B17, G6. Here's how it works. D5, D17 is the range where we want to find the maximum value C5. C17, G5 filters by product, currently olives, B5. B17, G6 filters by country, currently Spain Excel will search through the list and return the largest quantity that matches both criteria. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have quantity data for different products sold across several countries. Now let's find out the minimum quantity of olives sold in Spain. To do that, we'll use the minifs function, which returns the lowest value based on one or more conditions. Click on the result cell and type equal sign minifs. D5, D17, C5, C17, G5, B5, B17, G6. Here's how it works. D5, D17 is the range where we want to find the minimum value C5, C17, G5 filters by product, currently olives. B5, B17, G6 filters by country, currently Spain, Excel will search through the list and return the smallest quantity that matches both criteria. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. You got it. Was that helpful? In the next video, we'll dive into even more powerful Excel tricks. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. See you soon.